Good evening. We good? Yeah. Um, I want to go ahead and call to order the monthly meeting for the Richland County Recreation Commission for October 16, 2023. Um, can I get a motion to adopt the agenda? Make a motion to adopt the agenda. Second. Commissioner Jacobs. Yes. Commissioner Lapine. Yes. Commissioner Lindsay. Yes. Commissioner Mobley. Yes. Commissioner Singleton. Yes. Motion approved. All right. So I'd like to get a motion to go ahead and approve the minutes from the September 18th meeting, 2023, our regular board meeting. Make a motion to approve September 18th, 2023. Second. Commissioner Jacobs. Yes. Commissioner Lapine. Yes. Commissioner Lindsay. Yes. Commissioner Mobley. Yes. Commissioner Miller. Yes. Commissioner Singleton. Yes. Motion approved. Okay. Um, now it's time for our public input. Ashley. We have two individuals to speak tonight. When your name is called, please proceed to the podium, address your concerns, and you will have two minutes to speak. Ms. Carletta Wilson. She's not present. Mr. Darrell Davis. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. afternoon. I'm just here to try to have Lillian put on a, where we stand at this time with the uh, woman pool in Hopkins. And I want to give me an update on it. Or, where we're at at this time. I mean, normally we don't respond. We just take your input. Um, but with that said, we're planning on dealing with that, uh, dealing with our consultants and whatnot in the next couple of weeks. That's some okay. But we will say it on the last meeting that they would have bring y'all to have. That's something. what we're gonna do. Okay, then. Um, All right. The second second thing, uh, young lady from USC with the uh, program. Yes. Uh, we have a uh, a pretty good feedback from the hopper community with that. I'm estimating around about 200 plus. But what I do need to know is that's going to reach as far as, is it already, is it okay for me to cross that line as far as going into East Over and uh, yeah, as a community or is it just in the surrounding area of Hopkins? What I really need to know. That's a good question. I mean, I would assume, Mr. Davis, I'd assume that that would be a question for USC. Um, I don't know the answer to that. I'm glad. I mean, I think it's a great idea, obviously. Right. But I, I, am, I would have to ask Tamika and staff to, you know, maybe get with you about getting with them as a group to talk about doing it over in your crossover, as you as you mentioned. Because, like I said at the last meeting when you and I spoke um, on the way to executive session, I think it's an unbelievable opportunity for right. the community, and I think that we need to push it. I just don't know the bu budget, or I don't know the set up, but I'm more than happy for you to help in any way that we can. Mr. Davis, um, Mr. Davis, we'll yes. be discussing that later on in the same meeting. Well, no, no he, come up in, hold on. on the agenda. But what he's asking is that we're going to vote. We have to vote on it still. Right, right. I understand formally, that. But he's asking once we've done that and tell me if I'm wrong, is that you want us to, you want to help. That's because, can, you know, some of them have friends in Gaston and they have also have friends in East Stove. My point is, I just don't, I'm just trying to figure out where do the ball stop at? Does it stop in Hopkins or do I can expand it as far as having the people in East Stove, Gaston and Hopkins come? Because there's a lot of people, you know, very interested into the program. Then I need to know what is the cutoff limit. Is 200 too many? Or, you know, I don't want to just put it all the way out there and then have to turn back around and say, hey, you know, it's a certain it. limit. We're going to discuss it tonight. And maybe that'll help you with your answer. We can't give you that answer because we haven't even signed a resolution. Yes, that's understandable. I'm on, I'm on the same page with you. On well, that. We want to help you out with that. Okay, then. 
All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Miss Carletta Wilson has arrived. Miss Wilson. Good evening. How you doing? Excuse my eye my sunglasses. I heard you. Um, once again, I'm here on behalf of the citizens and tax bill of Richland County in regards to our CRC facilities and events. And we're still waiting for results from the work session on August the 31st in regards to the pool. And I'm thinking at that, that session, we said at this meeting, we have some type of indication as to what transferred with that meeting that was wonderful. And um, every time we have a meeting, you guys go into executive session, but we still haven't heard anything about what's going on with hiring of a director. Um, where are we with that? You know, it's been how long now? Two years, possibly, getting close to two years. So we need to go ahead and see about, you know, get this position filled and move forward so we can make RCRC great again. Um, concerns from the past, you know, I'm still concerned about security at all of our parks and what's going on with that. Um, progress is being made with the upkeep of some of the parks, and we noticed that, we appreciate that, it's not going unnoticed, but we still need to have all the necessary staff hired um, to keep our grounds and facilities up to par and sanitary for after school programs, even just for citizens that are visiting the park. We want to make sure that, you know, we're following everything that's needed to keep it a nice, clean, safe environment for all of our um, participants, whether it's um, filling the vacancies as soon as possible or hiring contracts or whatever needs to be done. Um, I talked about replacing some of the furniture and stuff at the facilities that needs to be done. I know everything is involved in the budget and what you can and cannot allow. I just want to make sure that once the board start making these decisions, they'll consider all these things in their plan. Um, communication is still lacking in our parks about things that are going on. And we need to work on promoting our parks and establishing programs to lure people into our parks. And Felicia and um Leslie, we've been in contact about doing some things to help promote, um, communicating, promoting our parks in a positive manner, and to get RCRC um, back on the map again. My two minutes is up. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. All right. Well, I have sure. some more things to say, but I'll just I'll just sit down on that note, then I'll adhere to the regulation. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, no more public input. Uh, we'll look for a financial report from our chief financial officer, Ryan and Zana. Good evening, Chair Lapine, members of the Commission Board. I'd like to begin tonight providing you with an update on the General Enterprise Fund financials for the period July 1, 2023 through September 30, 2023. Total revenues for the General Fund for this three-month period were approximately $1.2 million compared to $809,000 this time last year. It represents an increase of approximately $388,000 or a 48% increase. Um, property tax revenue was the largest driver for this increase. Um, while our uh, property tax allocation did increase for fiscal year 23, uh, the increase that we're seeing is largely attributed to the timing in which we're receiving our revenues from Richland County. Uh, grant revenues are also up from this time last year as we did receive uh, an ARPA fund reimbursement at the beginning of this fis fiscal year. Program revenues for this three month period were $232,000 compared to $219,000 this time last year. Represents approximately $13,000 increase or 5.9%. Uh, youth camp revenue was the largest driver for this increase. <clears throat> General fund expenditures for this period were $3.1 million compared to $3.5 million this time last year. 
represents approximately 12.4% decrease or $435,000. Uh, the biggest driver would be IT related purchases, uh, repair costs and marketing expenses are all currently down from this time last year. Uh, additionally, to date, um, you, you'll see that uh, in in your your year over year comparison that was provided, um, sellers and fringe are, is down, and that's that's largely due to um, there being three uh, pay periods at the beginning of fiscal year twenty three uh, in July. Um, so, just keep that in mind that we haven't um, we haven't had the same amount of pay periods. Um, this year compared to last year. Enterprise fund revenues uh, for the current period were 301,000 compared to 296,000 this time last year. Represents approximately 5%, uh, I'm sorry, $5,000 increase or 1.7%. Uh, total enterpri enterprise fund expenditures for this period were 243,000 compared to 267 this time last year, represents a 9% decrease or $24,000. Uh, again, salaries uh, were the largest driver for this change. Um, and again, that's largely due to um, one less pay period uh, occurring at the start of fiscal year uh, 24 compared to fiscal year 23. What month do we have the three pay periods in? Um, typically, it happens every six months. I believe we December. are due to have three pay periods in December, yeah. and then we'll so then have. Then would kind of get squared up. Yep, exactly. And then mm -hmm. um, it should occur again right at the end of the fiscal year in June. So, uh, Ryan, I have a question about the pay yep. periods. So, is it twenty six pay periods? There's twenty six pay okay. periods a year. Correct. So. I understand the three pay periods in the beginning of this fiscal year. I don't understand. Are we changing the number of pay periods this year? No. Okay. Um, the the point I was uh, trying to drive is uh, we, we had a pay date last fiscal year that landed on July 1st. It was the, the, the first day of the fiscal year. And okay. so every two weeks we get paid. So there were three pay, pay periods that, um, that occurred at the beginning of uh, uh, the fiscal year last year in July. And so um, when we're comparing year to date figures uh, for the current year to last year, you just need to keep in mind that there was one additional pay period. Okay, yep. thank you. Did you have any questions, anybody? Thank you. All right, thank you very much. All right, you have some unfinished business. Um, so we do have a resolution approving the action of the executive uh, related to the memorandum of understanding buying between RCRC and the University of South Carolina. So. Um, yes, Commissioner, this item was tabled from the last meeting, uh, the meeting last month. We have um, thought this was a great partnership with USC. They want to collaborate with us for their project team, which is a um, free group-based um, um, physical activity program for African-American women. A copy of this project is in your um, packet. The resolution is for me to proceed with the MOU on behalf of the agency so we can get this document back to USC representatives. It is a 12-week 12 week program that they're offering in the fall and spring. And we do have a couple of representatives from USC here who's actually part of the project team, Ms. Michaela Mansfield and um, Dr. Allison Sweeney. So if you do have any additional questions, then um, we have those representatives here. And if um, Sarah have anything else to add in reference to this MOU, she's here as well. I'll let the board ask any questions. My comments are that I think that we're squared away on this now, just that we've had time to review. Um, but it would be nice. Um, I think Mr. Davis from the community just asked about possibility of furthering this program down the road. So it might be good to get everybody together to discuss if that could happen down the road and 
maybe pass on contact information with to make it you get involved and Yes, and that information that will come from um, USC. They're um, willing to go to those um, areas of the county and um, provide this project team um, activity. So that will come through them. We're just working with them to be able to provide the uh, facility and also to um, help get the participants. Okay. So, is there any questions from our board? My question is, uh, and I saw some people nodding heads in the back. Uh, he asked about how many uh, people would be able to be a part of this program. Is there a limit on the amount of people? Can we get Ms. Bacala and Ms. Sweeney to come on up to the podium, please? Thank you. Good evening. I'm Dr. Allison Sweeney, and I'm Michaela Mansfield, who's mm -hmm. the recruitment coordinator for this program. Nice to be here with y'all this evening. Um, as far as the sample goes, the number of participants. So we are offering this program at a few different areas, both in the broader Columbia area, as well as out in Sumter. And the total number that we're looking at over the course of the project is um, close to 400. Uh, and so, you know, we're really excited because there's a lot of opportunities. This is a five-year grant. We're only in year two, so we still have three years ahead of us. Um, so in terms of an exact number, I would say from Hopkins, you know, if we were continuing the, to implement the program there. Help me think through that, Michaela. How many more? Um, so we're all four. Five left. Um, so that would be at least another I would say close to 100 at this point. Right. Yeah. And those uh, gas in the east over can be included in that Hopkins number. Yes, absolutely. So Mr. Davis you're looking at about 100. So thank you. But but Hamilton so does that mean that the people from Gaston Hopkins I mean Gaston they would come up over to the Hopkins, to Hopkins area? Hopkins area. That's where it's located. If they're able to, yeah, we would be happy okay. to. Thank you. All right. I make a resolution. I make a recommendation that we accept your resolution. Make a motion. Mm -hmm. Make a motion. Make a motion. Second. Second. Commissioner Jacobs. Yes. Commissioner Lapine. Yes. Commissioner Lindsay. Yes. Commissioner Miller. Yes. Commissioner Mobley. Commissioner Singleton. Yes. Yeah. Motion approved. Thank you very much. Um, so the next item is men and reinstated operating agreement between RC, RC and RC Richmond County Recreation Foundation. Mm -hmm. Can you give some uh, narrative to this, please? Yes. Yeah, so again, this item um, was tabled from the last meeting in order for the board to review the revised um, operating agreement between Richland County Recreation Commission and the foundation. Uh, this document was last updated back in 2008, and this document is um, prudent to have um, between the two uh, entities to uh, have separation of what the duties and responsibilities are for each agency. And Sarah, if you want to elaborate a little bit more on that. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, but Tamika just stated is correct. Um, this operating agreement just formalizes the interplay between the foundation and the commission. The foundation is a 501c3 organized for the benefit of the, the commission, meaning that the funds and fundraising that it does, the benefits should flow back to the commission. This just formalizes it. Um, this is something that a lot of grant applications like to see. When you are a benefit corporation, they want to say, well, what is your operating agreement? Just to show that both parties accept the benefit name usage and the flow of funds back to the benefit party. On the last meeting, I asked that we be provided a copy of the old foundation agreement, and I have not received that yet. I thought they that was in your packet on. at the last month, maybe. Which packet? The, the one you received. 
the one you received last month. So can I ask a question? To, sure. Uh, yeah. Zeta? So like the foundation mm -hmm. is a 501c3, the, the separate group. Mm -hmm. And I remember in the past going through the bylaws and seeing some stuff that was somewhat antiquated and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Has that all been, see that, that's right. This, but this is different than that, right? Yes, that's correct. So the bylaws we updated in the summer of 2022. And so because they are a standalone foundation, um, they approved those. I think, um, Commissioner Singleton, you were there at that meeting. Is that Last correct? Summer, so. That's when we have started to um, mm -hmm. look at everything. So we looked at everything. The so agreement and the bylaws. bylaws kind of brought forward a lot of those antiquated things. Right. Um, sorry, so, what was that? I think in the past, what's happened is when we have updated bylaws, we usually got a summary uh, in terms of a comparison if you were leaving the old and going to the new. And I remember that we had to update some items. But do you recall specifically what items needed to be brought up to date? You know, I don't. It's been quite some time. And I will right. say that the commission does not have um, bylaws oversight of the foundation. The foundation is a standalone 501c3 entity. And so that's why they approve their bylaws. And now before you is the operating agreement that sets forth the interplay between the commission and the foundation. I think what was requested, I think Commissioner Lapine requested that it be redlined. So I think it's not a, a matter of us not having it, but it being redlined, the difference between the two. And and Sarah's response to that was that it was just so much of a re, uh, redundant to do that because with so much information changed between the bylaws and the agreement that she asked that you just look at this one as just an overall new agreement. I hear you and I understand, but he mm -hmm. asked for it to be redlined. No, because we think had several they, versions. I think it was several versions of the real line. Yeah, I'm just. What I'm wondering is, I think that our group, our commission, we need to. Um, I'm trying to think the right word. We just don't want to blind. I think we feel blind. And that's not anybody's fault. That we just. I think we have to have a better understanding of exactly what we're signing, because. I just have a really bad memory of our foundation from the standpoint of I remember that there was bylaws that were so antiquated that like said, if you don't, you know, that you're supposed to have your, what are the 501c3, you know, you have to have those um, filings done with mm -hmm. the state. And we were so, I, I don't think a lot of stuff was done even, mm -hmm. you know, that we would, and then you have, you have to have meetings every Mm -hmm. Three, you know, every whatever the time period is, and mm -hmm. there was not enough board members. I just remember mm -hmm. it being kind of a, and then I know that we kind of brought it back. And I do wholeheartedly think the foundation is the key to our success in the mm -hmm. future for, you know, really doing projects, mm -hmm. you know, sponsoring scholarships. Yeah. So I don't want to, I don't want to drag on it, but I also want to make sure that that we have our arms around this. So I'm just wondering if we should have some sort of maybe, I don't know what the, maybe you have a suggestion, Sarah, if we have yeah. a little work session. I think that makes a lot of sense. Just I mean, we can have because a work I, session. What I'm saying is I'd like, because I mean, it's probably good that there's no direct link between the two, right? And the foundation, but like, it's good for everybody just that, you know, a lot of board members haven't dealt with that. Yeah. And quite honestly, in the five and a half years I've been around, you know, I've seen us give out some scholarships for Mr. Football and some other stuff that have been great, mm -hmm. but I haven't seen a whole lot other than that. Yeah. And I know we're trying to get it together, but mm -hmm. I think we could be better off with some sort of quick work session that we can maybe devote 20 or 30 minutes to if we could just, you know, get it narrowed yeah. down. I don't know how we do that. You I know, think that but makes I, a lot I of do sense. suggest that we do something like that. And I'll look to any other commissioner's comments. Yeah, I'd say that makes a lot of sense. And I guess that's um, our fault of not understanding y'all's knowledge on the foundation. Um, but we can get with staff. I think a work session makes a lot of sense. It would be, if it's a full work session of everyone, it would, you know, of course, be subject to FOIA policies. So we'd have an agenda for yeah. 24 hours, that sort of stuff. Um, but we can do it during the day. We can do it virtually. 
um, anything like that. It also might would be helpful, and I'll defer to staff on this, but to have uh, the foundation board members there as well. Yeah, because we we were the foundation. Uh, I've been working for the last year to revamp the foundation, and now we have um, at least six um, members now for the foundation. So you know we're definitely. Um, back up and running, getting documentation in order and up to date. So um, I do not think that they were opposed to having a meeting. So maybe in the next week or two, you can try to get a survey out to fellow commissioners and find out when a good time to do a work session would be with, along with the six members of the foundation. That's just my suggestion. Yeah, because we, we actually have a um a meeting coming up um next week. Okay. And I can be as available as needed. I have to be there. So for tonight, I guess we'll table that amendment. But we got one signed, huh? That's good. All right, new business. You make any new business no. at all? All right. Um, other business? Other business, um, just a um, brief report um, for Firesgate Park. We will have a contractor that will be coming out to uh, rebuild the picnic shelter. There are uh, materials that are on back order. So once they get in, they will be starting that work. Um, in reference to, I know Hopkins Pool, I know we are, we're working with the consultants to um, update the aquatics feasibility study information. So, um, I would need for the board would need to solidify a date where we want to do that presentation. Other items, RCRC did receive a uh, $2,500 grant from the Carolina Panthers for Adaptive Recreation um, Flag Football League. And that concludes my brief report. Yes, sir. Uh, just in an effort to be transparent, I know that we have some people in here from Hopkins, uh, and I know you were told that you would have the information. I was put in place over the committee for that information. We did have it in place uh, to be presented tonight, but our chairman wanted to make sure that we could have an intimate setting again so you all can see that versus not being able to say much tonight. So I did want to let you know we did have it in place. So don't think that we didn't do what we were supposed to do. We did. The consultants have everything going, and we'll get back with you soon. Thank you. All right. Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. I had something for you, Sarah. Um, all right. Commissioner uh, Lapine, here. Huh? I, I, I have a question about the grant. Can we hear more about it? $2,500. First of all, congratulations. Uh, that's exciting news. Do we hear information about what the plans are? I mean, I can read what it says, but I'd love to have some more information. Well, for our adaptive recreation um, flag football, that's just a donation that they do. And this is something that they do every year. Um, and they actually get invited to go um, to the Panthers game as well. Um, so this is just a funding that they put towards that program. Where do they where they can actually play? The, what, what, what fields are they using for that? The buff road. Buff? Mm -hmm. okay. Very nice. So it's had, so it's folks that are signed up for this opportunity get an opportunity to play flag football at Bluff Road Park, and then they get an opportunity to attend the Panthers game, and we're saying that that $2,500 Helps to frame the cost of that. Is, is that what I'm understanding? The 2500 goes towards the lead itself, and then the they contact us um, to come to one of the games. So that's in addition. That's not the 2500 okay. but that's an invite later on. Thank you. That's awesome. I did want to, um, before we get to Felicia's compliment, our maintenance staff, um, there was a, out at Ballantyne Park and out at Polo Road Park, um, a weekend two weekends ago they had a, a big soccer tournament. And since I'm in the soccer community or have friends in it, um, I heard rave reviews about Ballantyne Park and um, Polo Road and the conditions of the fields. 
Um, and so we should all be proud. And um, that's it for me. Alicia? <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Chairman Pee, members of the board. And I'd just like to add uh, to that Panthers trip, they actually went on yesterday. Oh. So they have an opportunity to tour the facilities um, mm -hmm. and it's special needs mm -hmm. children that are participating. Those games are modified. So some students that never have an opportunity to play flag football, they're yeah. excited when they're out there on that field. Yeah. And this is something that's been uh, granted to the commission for a number of years. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Now to our activities. Since last month, we had Power in Pink on September the 22nd. That event was held at Ghana's Ferry Adult Activity Center. We had over 100 people in attendance. We'd like to say thank you to the RCRC staff, our volunteers, Commissioner Lindsay and Jacobs, uh, the Big DM, Pope Finn, Coca-Cola, Panera, Target, Homegrown Hospitality, Tri-County Electric. And those were some of the sponsors. And we also um, like to recognize that the Power in Pink raised over $400 for the Prisma Health Breast Center. On September the 28th at the Gaston Park Community Center, they hosted Let's Sip and Chat like to say thank you to San Sandra Otherton, our site director out there. When I spoke to her, she said the participants enjoy socializing and they also enjoyed a fashion show out at Gaston Park Community Center. So thank you to Sandra. On September the 29th, Donis Ferry uh, Sports Complex, they hosted their third annual Senior Field Day. It was 58 participants. And I was out there, it was so hot, but those seniors were so <laughs> very competitive. So I'd like to say thank you to Demetria, Andrea, and Mrs. Estelle for hosting a great event. And our volunteers, Tayana, Connie, and Christian. I'd also like to say thank you to Commissioner Hamilton and Commissioner Lindsay for your attendance as well. Also on that day, it was a busy day. We left Ghana's Ferry and came to the Park Lane Adult Activity Center. They were celebrating their pajama jam party. It was over 60 people in attendance. Uh, the seniors were laughing and enjoying themselves. I learned of a hidden talent that day that was revealed from Mr. Commissioner Mobley. <laughs> it's too late to turn back now. <laughs> and I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> but we also like to say thank you to Commissioner Hamilton for your attendance. Special thanks to the wonderful host, Shante Cleveland. She did a phenomenal performance with our safety officer. Oh, he just walked out. Mr. George, and um, they did a rendition of You're Gonna Love Me. So you have to be in attendance to some of these events uh, just to see it. That hidden talent. Also in September, on September the 30th, uh, they had a popcorn and movie night at Hopkins Park, and they had seven participants. We'd like to say thank you to the staff at Hopkins Park. And recreation is about the sport of fresh air and fishing. So they had a Lake Murray charter fishing trip on October the 5th. They had five people in attendance, and we'd like to say thank you to Bluff Road Park, the site director, Mr. Henry, and the district supervisor, Mr. Ira. Fall Festival was held on October the 7th at Blackwood Park. They had over 100 people in attendance. And we'd like to say thank you to Commissioner Brittany Singleton for your attendance. We'd like to say thank you to Mr. Lamar, the site director there at Blackwood Park, the district supervisor, Renee Franks, for hosting this free family event. They have partnership and vendors from True Italian Ice, the Main Street Bakery, Absolute Total Care, and the Blackwood Fire Department. Soul Survivor Tea and Brunch was held on October the 14th at the Pine Grove Community Center. They had 45 people in attendance. We'd like to say thank you to Sunshine and the staff at Pine Grove and also to District Supervisor Rayshawn Nelson. Before I do the upcoming events, we'd like to say congratulations to our very own Ms. Tamika Williams. 
She was elected to serve on the board for the National Recreation and Parks Ethnic Minority Society, and she holds the office as treasurer, and she was officially installed at NRPA conference on last week, so congratulations. Our upcoming events on October the 20th, we're gonna have a volunteer appreciation luncheon at Valentine Community Center. Also on the 20th, here at the Park Lane AAC, they're gonna have a It's Your Birthday potluck party. On the 21st, they have a pink pumpkin contest at Blythewood Park. And also on the 21st, we'll have Gang Awareness Hoop Fest at Bluff Road Park. On the 27th, we're gonna have Superheroes Fun Fest at Meadow Lake Park. And also on the 27th, we'll have a trunk and treat at Hopkins Park. And on the 31st, we'll have a pumpkin, excuse me, a polo blackout candy prowl at Polo Road Park. On November the 7th, we'll have a Thanksgiving luncheon at Gaston Park Community Center. On November the 9th, we'll have a Veterans Brunch and Health Fair at the Donna's Ferry Adult Activity Center. On the 10th, we'll have Thanksgiving favorite cook-off at the Valentine Community Center. And on the 18th, we'll have a turkey giveaway at North Springs Park. And that's just a list of few. So we're going to be busy the next couple of weeks. That concludes my report. Thank you. I'd like to make a special recommendation and thank you to Lisa Lewis Hutchison um, for the pink power. Um, she had over 100 people in attendance. That's the uh, activity we raised $400. And she also had the uh, mammogram bus out there giving free mammograms that day. So I want to personally thank her for her um, hard work. All right, that will um, go into executive session. Can I get a motion to go into executive session? Make a motion that we're going to executive session. Second. Commissioner Jacobs. Yes. Commissioner Lapine. Yes. Commissioner Lindsey. Commissioner Miller. Commissioner Mobley. Commissioner Singleton. Yes. Motion approved. All right, uh, we're coming out of executive session. Is there a motion to come out of executive session? I'll make a motion to come out of executive session. Second. Commissioner Jacobs? Yes. Commissioner Lapine? Yes. Commissioner Lindsay? Yes. Commissioner Mobley? Yes. Commissioner Singleton? Yes. Motion approved. All right, is there any action or items to, to discuss in executive session? Is there any motions? In there? I move that we negotiate a contract to hire a temporary member to the executive team. We have a second. Second. Commissioner Jacobs? Yes. Commissioner Lapine? Yes. Commissioner Lindsay. Yes. Commissioner Mobley. Yes. Commissioner Singleton. Yes. Motion approved. That said, uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Chair, I motion we adjourn this meeting. Is there a second? A second. Commissioner Jacobs. Yes. Commissioner Lapine. Yes. Commissioner Lindsay. Commissioner Mobley, yes. Commissioner Singleton. Yes. Motion approved, meeting adjourned.